Uh, the same store sales numbers growth, I think, took a lot of people by surprise, certainly well above what Wall Street was expecting here. What exactly do you think allowed such a huge gap between Wall Street expectations and what you ended up reporting? You know, I think uh, people didn't ex anticipate that we would have the traffic growth that we experienced. So, you know, we had mid single digit traffic growth. And prior to coming into the quarter, I think that was everybody's question. Uh, we had to take some pricing last year as a result of the inflationary environment. And as we started to roll off of that pricing, come out with some, uh, I think, new exciting items, the fajita quesadilla, chicken al pastor, and then frankly, you know, being staffed again and executing against our standards right. uh, really delivered great traffic growth, which then translated into nice same store sales growth. Well, talk about the, the traffic here. So we're talking about more people in your stores, right? Correct. Are they spending more? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Obviously, yeah. with the pricing, uh, the basket size is up, right. uh, and then the average ticket is up. So, but if you backed out inflation, if you backed out some of those factors there, I mean, they continue to order. You know, think of it this way: most people get a chicken burrito or bowl. Mm -hmm. About 50% of people add guac or queso. Mm -hmm. So all those uh, metrics continue to stay the same, um, and chicken is you know, our number one item that people buy at Chipotle. You opened up uh, about 40 or so new locations in the most recent quarter. Uh, I know you have ambitions to maybe open up, what, a couple of hundred stores in this year alone? Yeah, so our yeah. target this year is 250 to 285 restaurants. Mm -hmm. Longer term, we'd love to be opening, you know, 8 to 10 percent getting closer to that 10%. Yeah. Uh, but we're really excited about how we've accelerated new unit growth pretty much every year for the last five years. That seems like a lot, though, in terms of the number of new locations. Where do those locations go, in existing markets or in new markets? So uh, fortunately, we're able to open in both locations. The markets where we're somewhat penetrated, we continue to have great success opening with terrific economics. And then places where we're underpenetrated, we continue to see tremendous growth. Most recently, we've talked a lot about our small towns that we've been going into. So think of it as like, Populations of 50,000 people, mm -hmm. just tremendous openings, and the brand continues to perform really well. You can't open that many locations without hiring a lot of people. Yeah. We've been talking a lot of, on this program about the job market, how tight it is. Uh, how have you done right now staffing your current locations, and more importantly, trying to be ready to staff whatever new locations you open? Yeah, you know, fortunately, we've yeah. done a great job of hiring people, and uh, I think in general, the labor market is normalized. Mm -hmm. So uh, our restaurants are staffed. Really where we spend a lot of our time now is on the training, development, and you know, we've gotten back to the shoulder to shoulder training. So it's like when somebody comes in the restaurant, let's make sure we take the time mm -hmm. to teach them all the culinary. You know, how do you cook the chicken correctly? How do you make the guacamole correctly? Because what we find is when we get people trained up correctly, they stay with us. Right. And then the good news is because we're building, you know, 250, 300 restaurants a year, there's plenty of opportunity for you to grow your career with us and you know, become a general manager, a multi-unit leader in you know, three to four years. How much is that added to your labor cost, that strategy? Well, it, it's all, you know, it kind of balances with the fact that we're adding new restaurants, so it's very much ratio-based. Right. Wages, obviously, over the last couple of years are up significantly, you know, I think north of like 20%. Yeah. But, Have uh, you seen any improvement, meaning that any moderation in that growth and, or what people are demanding? Yeah, so we've seen yeah. normalization in kind of wage expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, you're now more in the mid single digit uh, inflation on that side, which is getting back to kind of some historical norms. What about the competition for that labor with other fast casual restaurants, yeah. and even even fine dining restaurants? I mean, it's a it's a small universe here. Yeah, I think yeah. actually one of the things that's kind of helped us is as there's been some slowdown in those warehouse jobs or big ba big box retailer jobs. We've mm -hmm. seen more people come back to the restaurant industry. Okay, um, so I think. That's helped. And then also just our growth and our continued success. Mm -hmm. I think employees talk to you know their friends and a lot of times the examples we end up with great employees are kind of a network from a great employee bringing on, in some cases, a family member or in other cases, a friend. Are you anticipating an economic downturn or recession here in the US? You know, we're not planning for it. Uh, we're planning for running our business against this idea of we're going to continue to grow. We're going to do food with integrity. We're going to do great culinary. We're going to do it fast. Um, and, you know, the good news for us is if there happens to be a slowdown uh, in the past, uh, you know, what we find is if we focus on executing our core business, mm -hmm. we can handle the downturn uh, and then obviously it'll be temporary and we can work our way out of it. But is there a concern about, I guess, a trade down effect that if, if economic conditions are tight, where is Chipotle sort of at a price point where a consumer would look at you versus, I don't know, a McDonald's or, or another fast casual place and say, yeah. 
that's a better proposition over there. I mean, look, in the fast casual space, yeah. uh, we're usually anywhere from a 10 to 30% discount. Okay. Uh, so to get the quality food at uh, our speed and our customization, mm -hmm. if you were to go to another fast casual place, you're playing 20, 30% more. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at uh, the kind of the QSR industry, you know, our price premium relative to the food and the experience that you get, yeah. we continue to get feedback that we've got a tremendous value proposition. Do you see yourself more in direct competition with fast casual as a category or with the quick serve fast food type places? You know, you know much more in the fast casual space. Okay. Um, you know, it's the quality of the food, the yeah. experience that we provide. It's really a category uh, that's different from what QSR is or fine dining, obviously. Labor costs are moderating. What about the costs of your ingredients? A lot of talk about the price of protein, the price of avocados, yeah. things like that. Have, has that moderated? Yeah, it has, yeah. Uh, with the exception of beef. Um, beef is one of those that continues to be um, challenging, mm -hmm. and we'll see how it plays out for the rest of the year. But um, you know, we've definitely seen moderation in avocados mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of the other elements in our food. How are you sourcing things? Are you in long-term contracts? Are you? Do you have? I guess I'm asking. Do you have a way to lock in prices that, you know, that are we, more favorable? We to actually you? We, we don't lock in uh, that many uh -huh. items on our our, our menu. Yeah. Obviously, we do have some longer-term contracts on chicken. Um, and some of the main ingredients. Mm -hmm. But uh, the good news for us is our supply chain team has done a fabulous job of yeah. locking in on the things at the right time uh, to set us up where we make sure we're in supply mm -hmm. and that we continue to get access to the great ingredients that we want to have access to. Obviously, Chipotle is basically a national company, more or less, but you are physically, at least the headquarters, based here uh, in California. I, I do want to get your thoughts on just the California business climate overall and what you feel with regards to the ease or maybe difficulty in trying to do business and stay here? Yeah, look, it's unfortunately it's getting harder uh, versus being easier. And uh, there's a lot of other places where we operate restaurants where it's a heck of a lot easier. And as a result, we're able to open more restaurants and provide more job opportunities. Um, we have a tremendous business in California. I wish it wasn't as hard as it is to continue to operate as well as open new restaurants because I think we could actually grow our business even more in California. But we need the environment to kind of swing back to some, I think, more business opportunity seen as like growth is a vehicle to really improve people's opportunities as opposed to trying to, you know, manage down these businesses.